Welcome to our missionary story for children. We're so excited that you tuned in. And it says children's missionary stories, but this is for people of all ages. In fact, I learn a lot from these missionaries that is a lesson for me that will help me to better serve the Lord. This is what these are all about. And also, not only that, but it shows us in the lives of others, how do we learn how in, in God's school for us is a learning experience, everything that happens. We learn through God's Word, we learn through other believers, and we also learn by the things that happen to us. Now we can do either one thing or the other. We can become bitter or we can glorify the Lord. Now here's what God's Word says. Now we saw last week how these men were put in prison and how terrible we would think that it would be to be in a dark prison. And we saw how she was concerned because they were in prison. Well you see Paul and Silas was in prison and they were beaten and they were not there because of their sin but because they were giving out God's Word. So we all suffer even when we are being obedient. We suffer even when we are being obedient. And this is what Paul, he was in prison, but he wrote this beautiful book to the Philippians to teach them how to live a godly life and in everything give thanks. You see, there was no murmuring in his life. He says, do all things without murmurings and complainings. Do you murmur? Do you complain? Do you think that the only time that you are happy or when things are going good? Well, we're going to find out some of these lessons and they will teach us also. It says in Philippians 4, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown, to stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Erodus and Cytacus that they be of the same mind in the Lord. I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help these women who labored with me in the gospel with Clement also, and with other my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And let's, verse 8 is what we as believers are to do. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. What are we learning from these lessons? We're learning to keep our eyes on the Lord and not on people. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, thy word says to pray without ceasing, to rejoice evermore, and in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And to be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our request be made known unto thee, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And all things whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. 
And we are praying for this whole city to come to know thee as personal Savior. And our prayer is that we will labor fervently in prayer, that we will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God, and that we will have victory over all satanic powers, over all demonic spirits. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. As we come to this lesson, we come back once again to Corey Ten Boom that was born in Holland in 18 and 92. Her father was a watchmaker, the very best in Holland. People came from all over to be trained by him. He loved the Lord, as we told you last week, and if you missed this, he prayed at every meal for the Queen of Holland. And you know, we are to pray for our leaders. Also, he says, every day that he was looking for our Lord Jesus Christ to come in the clouds to take us to be with him forever and ever. He knew the Lord was coming and he prayed that this would be the day that he would come. We are to do the same thing today. And then, not only that, he was, he was a man that when he would go to the rich people and set their watches and their clocks, he would bring the servants back and teach them the word of God. And his father was also called William, as he had a son, William. And he started a society for Israel, a fellowship to pray for the Jews, a fellowship to pray for the Jews. He prayed for all of those that were down and out, and he helped all of those that were down and out. While he had his little daughter as they went to get parts for his watches and his clocks in Amsterdam, he went to many of the Jews. That's who he bought his parts from. They gave his little daughter candy, something she didn't have at home. Then on the way back, she was asking all kinds of questions. And of course, they set the clock, uh, his watches at the central station at the Y. They could see the boats on the water. And as they were coming back, she would ask questions when no one was around. And she asked adult questions. And he would say to her, can you lift my briefcase? Why, no, you know I can't lift your briefcase. Well then, I can't answer that question until you get older. You must wait. But every question that he could answer was from God's word. And he taught her how to live and the love that he had learned in serving the Lord. He said he helped every person because when we have the love of Christ, we want to help one and all. And once again, I say this over and over in these lessons, to love is to serve. So. When he came home, Aunt, Aunt Anna had the food ready on the table. And she, they gave her money for helping with the housework. But this box was called a blessing box. One penny was put in there every time they had the extra money. This was given to missionaries. There were nine people in this house to feed. That's a lot of people to feed. They had a pound of meat or maybe potatoes to put in or vegetables to put in. And then if someone else came, they would add a little extra water or potatoes so they could be fed. And the money that they gave to Aunt Anna, she spent it on others. She never used any of it for herself. 
Then one night there were two men that came. One of them had trials that he wanted to talk to Mr. Boom, Tan Boom about. He took him out into the workshop and he always gave them advice from God's Word. But one of the things that he could do, he could say, I know I have been through this. My wife has been ill. We've had sickness in the family. I know that we have almost had no money at all. I know because people have cheated me. And I know because people did not pay for their repairs when they come to pick up their watches. I know that even with illness, with no money, and with people being very unkind to you, you can still have the peace and joy of the Lord. You see, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Also, the joy of the Lord is your strength. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. These are Bible verses that we each must use daily in our lives. So, he told these men what they needed. He prayed with them. Then he would say to people, do you think that you're happy when you have a fine car, when you have clothes to wear that are nice? Or maybe when you can take long vacations? Is that when you think you're happy? Well, what would you do if those were all taken from you? Would you be happy then? Those are the things that can be taken and they can't bring you happiness. Oh, they last for a while. They're good for a while. They may make you feel good for a while. But what about those little children that do not have a nice house, a nice car, or maybe fine clothes? Do you cast them aside and not treat them good? You see, this is what we as believers must do. Reach those that are down and out. And this is what the Ten Boom family did. With the three aunts that came to live with them, there was Aunt Betts. Aunt Betts she was not as well liked as the other aunts because she complained a lot. But Aunt Betts had had a hard life. She had worked for rich people that were not very kind to her. And then when the children would do something, she was a governess to children to help with those rich people's families. When the children in the Ten Booms house would do something, she would say, the children that she was working with, they would never do that kind of thing. But they knew that they did because all children disobey. But Mrs. Ten Boom always tried to be extra nice to Mrs. Betts because she didn't want her to murmur and complain. So even though she complained the whole family was nice to her. And then there was Aunt Jane's. Aunt Jane's was the most wonderful, wonderful Christian. She married a pastor. He died before she was the age of 40. So she had to come and live with the Ten Boom family also. She had a small pension from her husband. She used that money to buy clothes for the Ten Boom children and all of these other children that you're going to see that comes to live with them. Missionary children where their parents had gone overseas to be a missionary. They came to live in the Ten Boom house. They had people coming all the time to live in their home. So she would spend her money 
and buy clothes for the girls. And many times, Nola and Betsy didn't like the clothes, but Corey was always glad, even though they were drab and gray. And she bought hats for the girls, and she even bought them cakes and things when it wasn't even their birthday. She said of her Aunt Jane's, I believe Aunt Jane's is the richest person I've ever known because she gives everything to others. That's what made her happy. And then, of course, there was Aunt Anna always helping. These three aunts were a blessing. So Aunt Jane's, well, Aunt Anna, they all taught the Word of God in Sunday school or someplace. So Aunt Jane saw the soldiers that lived there. There was a barracks there. And she saw that they were lazy. They didn't have anything to do. So she thought they were too idle. We must do something to reach these soldiers. She invited the soldiers into the Ten Boom House. They came there twice a week to hear the Word of God. They had so many to come that they ran out of room. But while they were there, one soldier came in and he saw an organ and he wanted to play the organ. And they said, oh yes, you can play the organ. And then she said, can you teach my nieces? He taught his niece, her nieces how to play the organ. These two girls, Corey and Noli, every week they sang songs, they played the organ, and they also helped teach the Word of God to these soldiers. So after they had the room filled, Aunt Jane said she knew what to do. She invited all the rich people that they knew to her house. She told them about the soldiers that were bored, the soldiers that were idle, but God was using these men now to hear the Word of God and to serve. She said, we need a recreation center for these soldiers, and we need the money. Those wealthy people gave all the money. They built the recreation center, and they did more than just hear the Word of God. They had activities for them all the time. This was the beginning of Corey learning to give out God's Word. She had no idea that God was preparing her to reach thousands of people. Now, you children that are listening, if you're a child of God, you must begin to serve the Lord now. You do not wait until you're grown. This is what all the Ten Boone family did. They began while they were young, and God was preparing them for greater things. If you do not even serve the Lord as a child of God, then you're not going to have any rewards in heaven. You see, as I told you last week, and we've got to read this Bible verse once again, this is in Mark chapter 9, verse 41. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. You can visit the sick. You can give a track out. You can tell your classmates, your neighbors, your friends about Christ. You're not too little. That's what these girls did, and they learned it in their home. Not only that, but Corey learned another lesson. She became very sick, and the doctors told her she had TB, that's tuberculosis, a disease of the lungs. So they put her in bed, and she had to stay 
People came to visit her at first for a while, but after a while, they didn't come to visit her anymore. And she was lonely and she was sad. You see, that's what happens to us. We can get sad, we can get lonely. And guess what else happened to her? She became angry with God. Lying there, lonely and sad. Then she began to thank God that she was lonely and that she was sad. After she began to thank God for being lonely and sad and not being angry, you know what happened? She got a pain in her stomach. You see, there was no medicine in these days for tuberculosis, so the, she did, they didn't have medicine, so the only thing she could do was rest. She got a pain in her stomach, and the doctor came. They took her to the hospital. She didn't even have tuberculosis. She had appendicitis. They took her appendix out. You see, she could have blamed the doctors. She could have become bitter. And she did get angry just for a while. But then she saw this was not good for a child of God. You see, God allowed that to happen to her, to teach her in the school of God that whatever is happening, I'm to give thanks. So as we see these wonderful saints of God and then her sister was a, a Sunday school teacher and she was a good Sunday school teacher. Betsy was the best. She just made the stories come alive and she said, Betsy, can I go teach one day? Can I teach the children? I know the story about feeding the 5,000. Well, she said, yes, you can teach them. She taught the Sunday school class and she was finished in five minutes. She thought that she was going to spend at least half an hour on feeding the 5,000. You see the feeding of the 5,000, the bread and the loaves, and Jesus feeding all these people with the five loaves and two fishes. You see, Andrew found the little boy one, one of the disciples, Andrew, every time you saw him, he's bringing another person to Christ. And he found the little boy with the lunch, and it fed 5,000. What about you? Can you reach 5,000? Can we reach this whole city? We need you to help. So then after this, she didn't give up. Her aunt told her that she must try again. Oh, she was so disappointed because she didn't do good. But then there was a Christian school and she had a friend that taught there. And Corey said, can I come and teach and learn? She went twice a week. And then she went to Sunday school. They, these girls and these aunts had classes for the wealthy ladies. They had the triangle club and the Triangle Club, listen what they had to do in this club. They, they had a circle. Remember, there were 40, 40 adults, and they each had eight children. The rules for this girls' club was, seek your strength through prayer. Be open and trustworthy. Bear your difficulties cheerfully develop the gifts that God gave you. So she knew that she was going to teach and she found these special mentally handicapped children that were in church and they couldn't understand. But you know, she started a class for those children. They couldn't add. They didn't know history or geography. But when they were saved, the Spirit of God taught them the Word of God. She had a class for them also. What about us? Who's all around us that never hears? Why not? Because 
we have failed. God's Word says that's why this evil has come upon us, because we have not prayed unto Him that we would turn from our iniquities and understand His truth. So, her Aunt Betsy got sick. She got the flu. And she used to help with her father in the shop. So she came home and stayed. And this left Corey to go and to help her father. She helped with the bookwork. She helped also with meeting the customers. And the customers loved the Ten Boom family. And one day she said to her father, Can I become a watchmaker? He said, I hope that you will be a better watchmaker than I am. But you know, she was the first licensed woman to be a watchmaker in Holland. And do you know what else she learned in God's school? Patience. You see, don't pray for patience because tribulation work of patience. You have to have tribulation before you have patience. So every time she would start, and this was very tedious work, to do something that would take patience, she'd say, Lord, put your hand on mine. And he taught her patience as she became a licensed watchmaker and a very, very good one. So now, after this, her mother has died. Her aunts have died. And this only leaves her and Betsy, her sister, because William has married and gone to Germany, and Nola has married and got children, and her and father and Betsy are all that's home. After all of these years, with all of these people in this place, they only have three. But that didn't last very long. Because William, that was in Germany, knew some missionaries that were in Indonesia, and they needed a place for their children to come. Hardy, Hans, and Puck. What a challenge. And then a little girl called Tina. with Hitler and the Nazis. And as we find out about all of these things that happened, we are going to thank God more and more and more that we have freedom. Missionary, God's own emissary, be a missionary today.